your team supporting players. You are the main character in your game. Everyone else is just a player. When I use the word player, it refers to other people and the fact that your game is made up of moves or plays. Ultimately, everyone else in your life is a player in your game. Other players in your game. You are not the only one who appears and moves around in your game. You play in the overall arena with other players, but your moves are the only ones that matter to your game. The other players' moves are their own. It's essential to separate their moves from your game and not let them impact yours. Even though you want to separate other players' moves from your own, there is a reason they are around you in your game. You attract what and who you need to help you expand and transform into who you are becoming. All interactions, connections, and relationships that appear are orchestrated to teach you something. When you are connected and on the path, your energy calls in the right people to cross your path. You can always learn something from the people who surround you and interact with you in your game. Interdependent, not independent. You want to be in a pair, don't you? So why would you infer that you are only one? This is a control game. You are conned into thinking you should not control your game. Think about that. If you are able to maneuver your environment, choose who you are around, and decide what moves you make, why would you not be controlling that? A smart person learns quickly that the game of life is about knowing strategies and implementing them to intentionally move across the board. There is no hoping and wishing. My intent for you is that you will be a master of controlling your game once you're done with the school of soul. Who are the other players in your game? Friends, family colleagues, professional relationships, lovers, sexual partners, acquaintances, authority relationships, place-based players, community relationships, neighbors, party friends, social friends, online-only friends, helpers, and hinderers. People around you either help or hinder your game. Help, verb. Make it easier for someone to do something by offering one's services or resources. Oxford Dictionary Hinder, verb. Create difficulties for someone or something resulting in delay or obstruction. Oxford Dictionary. Even when another player hinders your game, they have a purpose. It's to teach you the lesson you need to learn as you navigate the obstruction. The lesson usually involves improving something in your character. Most often, these lessons are associated with repairing your self-worth and self-esteem. These areas must be strong for you to level up in your game. When they are strong, it reflects in your improved alignment. The polarity of the two types of people who show up in your game is why you can learn so many lessons from other people. An important part of your game involves navigating complex hiccups that show up when people teach you these lessons. Boundaries. Another reason unsupportive people may show up is to teach you about boundaries. Frenemies and people who drain your energy are two types of individuals who can undermine your progress. Inviting these players into your game is a pitfall. You have likely heard the expression, when dealing with a problematic person, you must sort them out. Allowing these players to enter your game reflects that you do not value yourself or your goals enough to set boundaries and keep them out. Treat your game and your vision like a precious infant. Be very protective. Guard any influence that comes around it. Not everyone deserves to be in or around it. When these players show up, it's a reminder to learn how to set and maintain your boundaries. Screen and sort these players out of your game. Society conditions you to want to fit into the herd, appease everyone, and not upset others. You cannot set boundaries if you do not value your self-worth. Elevating your self-worth is key to maintaining your boundaries. Put yourself first, know and elevate your worth, and protect your boundaries like a fortress. Exercise. Optimize your life's players and partnerships. This exercise is designed to help you evaluate the key players in your life, the people who influence your journey, impact your energy, and contribute to your growth. By assessing who is on your team and how they align with your goals, you can make strategic decisions to ensure your inner circle propels you forward rather than holds you back. Let's dive in. Step one, inventory. Your current players. Begin by creating a comprehensive list of everyone in your life who significantly impacts you. To ensure you don't miss anyone, answer the following questions. Who do you work with? Who do you see every day? Who do you live with? Who do you spend holidays with? Who do you exercise with? Who do you invite to your birthday? Who would you call if you had huge news to share? Who do you experience nature with? Who do you call if you want to go out for the night? Who would you call if you wanted a friend to take a course with? 
Who do you do yoga with? Who do you go to coffee with? Who do you spend your weekends with? Write down each name in a long list, making sure to dig deep and consider all relationships, both formal and informal. Step two, identify your go-all partners. Teaming up with people doesn't always have to be formal. You may have informal, go-all partners who support you in various areas of your life, helping you stay aligned with specific goals. Reflect on different arenas in your life where you are working to improve and identify those who align with your objectives. Fitness. Who do you work out or go for walks with? Health. Who joins you for smoothies or health-related activities? Wealth. Who do you attend financial workshops or seminars with? Learning. Who do you take classes or self-study with? Business. Who is in your mastermind group? Make a list of these arenas and write down the names of the people who are your go-all partners for each area. Next to each name, note the specific activity that they engage in with you to help keep you on track toward your goals. Step three, assess the future cost of your current teammates. Evaluate the potential impact of keeping or adding certain people to your life. Every person comes with potential costs and benefits. Consider whether they will help propel you forward or hold you back. Reflect on the following. Take inventory of yourself without them. Where are you currently in your game without these teammates? Assess your current levels of resources, energy, and progress. Analyze your resources. What resources, time, energy, money, mental space, emotional bandwidth, do you have without this teammate? What does your resource pool look like when it's just you? Project the future with each teammate. Imagine a future with this person actively involved. What resources might you gain or lose? How does their energy affect yours? Do they energize you or drain you? Are they adding to your momentum or creating drag? Project the future without them. Now, envision the same future without this person. What would you miss? What might you achieve alone or with other allies? How would your energy and resources change? Step four, ROI on interaction with roles relationships. This exercise helps you recognize that the people you surround yourself with mirror your own vibration. To ensure those around you contribute positively to your growth, Assign a vibration value. Look at each person on your list and assign them a value from one to 100, with 100 representing the highest vibration, most positive, supportive energy, and one representing the lowest. Categorize each person. Divide the people into two categories, help or hinder. Write help next to the names of those who uplift you and contribute positively to your goals. Write hinder next to those who tend to drain you or negatively impact your progress. Analyze the results. Review the distribution of people across both categories. Notice how many people fall into the help or hinder groups. This will likely be an eye-opening experience, revealing who genuinely supports your journey and who may be subtly or overtly holding you back. Step five, reflect and reconsider your go-all partners. Look over your list of go-all partners from step two. Do all the people you identified as goal partners feel like a good match for their respective arenas? Are there any changes you would make? Would you add or remove anyone from your list? Reflect on whether these partnerships still serve your current needs and future aspirations. Often, we partner up without checking in to see if the relationship still aligns with our goals. Step six, allow space for grace and alignment. Now that you have evaluated the players in your life, take a step back and give yourself time to think about these relationships. There is no need to make immediate changes. Simply reflect on your list and trust that. By shining a light on these connections, you have already begun the process of attracting the right partnerships and aligning your relationships with your goals. When you are mindful of the people in your life and their impact on your progress, you empower yourself to make conscious choices. As you give space for grace, the universe will help guide you toward the right alignments and partnerships that will support your growth and evolution. Step seven, make the name list without guilt. Before you continue, remember there is only one rule, no guilt. Anytime you remove yourself from someone's life, they learn a lesson too. Imagine that you are always leaving people better than when you met them, and that you are leaving to allow them to complete their journey and grow as well. Remember, this is your life, and you decide how good your story is going to be. Write down every name. Start by listing every person you communicate with. Begin with memory, then go through your text history, social media contacts, and any other communication channels. 
Get clear on how many people you have an open invitation to your energy. Ask the questions. For each name on your list, ask yourself the following questions. Go name by name, allowing each one to pass through the filter of these questions. Does this person speak positively or gravitate toward the negative? Who is helping? Who is hindering? Who leaves me filled with joy? Who inspires me to live bigger? Who leaves me with a smile? Who leaves me feeling drained? Do I want to be like this person? Who do I have room for? Do the values of my future self align with this person? Do I act like myself around this person? Do I feel alive or drained after spending time with this person? Do we speak of the future or do we speak of people when we are together? Who fuels me? Who drains me? Who irritates me? Who has habits that annoy me? Remember, any trait you dislike in another person may reflect a similar trait in yourself. Were these habits always in me or did I develop them from being around this person? Whose support feels sincere? Who's with me? Who's for me? Who has contributed to your life? Who makes your life great? Who makes an effort to stay in your life? Who makes an effort even when you give no response? Step eight, who stays and who goes? Based on your reflections, decide who stays and who goes. Write down your decisions, be, be honest with yourself, and know that you're making these choices for your future. Haven't come to a decision? Try a test run. Take space from people. Do a test run, take time away, and then make micro exposures. Track and analyze how you feel. Was your intuition correct? Exercise for taking the name list to the extreme extend. Cross off all the names that are no longer aligned with where you are going or who you are now. You must open up the spots if you want to create the space for the new to enter. Walking away is a skill in life. You've probably never thought of it like that, but think about it. You know it is hard to do. You also know it gets easier the more you do it. And you know once you finally do walk away from it, a being, a person experience, you feel better. You feel like you won. It is a skill that you master and you choose how long you stand in the places you are meant to walk away from to allow our next levels to open. Why this exercise matters. Every person in your life either adds to or subtracts from your progress. By calculating the future cost of current decisions, you can determine whether bringing someone into your circle or keeping them there is a wise decision. This evaluation isn't just about money or time. It's about protecting your energy, your dreams, and your journey. By completing this comprehensive exercise, you gain clarity on the people who should remain in your inner circle and those who may need to exit. This clarity allows you to align your relationships more strategically with your goals, ensuring that you are surrounded by people who uplift, inspire, and energize you as you continue on your path. It is a numbers game. Everything in life is a numbers game. When it comes to people here are two rules to know. Quantity is less important than quality. The more people you meet, the more problem people you will meet. When I was younger, I felt that I needed to have many friends. I thought that a large friend circle was valuable and that having a lot of friends validated my worth. How wrong I was. The secret to life is to have a small circle. Keep it tight, learn together, grow together. There is much more value in having a few key relationships and strengthening deep connections rather than spreading your energy over thousands of friends. Ultimately, keep the wealth you build within your circle. It's a numbers game. The more people you encounter, the more some will fit and others won't align with us and our frequency. We cannot avoid the cruel people we will encounter in life. The more we put ourselves out there, the more of them we will face. I have encountered many nasty people and had a lot of enemies or conflicts. Having met thousands of people, if not hundreds of thousands, it's a numbers game, baby. There's nothing wrong with you. Some people live their whole lives with one small group of friends, never meeting new people, so their conflict level is low, their ratio is low. The more people you meet and interact with, the more that number goes up because it's a ratio. So, when you do more in life, you will run into more problems in the form of people, but it's not actually more people. The ratio stays about the same. So, as you meet hundreds more, don't be surprised if one or two are bad apples. That's just how it works. Now that you've explored the power of overstanding your team and optimizing the players in your game, it's time to dive deeper into the strategies and techniques for building the strongest, most supportive team possible.
Let's continue this journey by learning how to identify and foster the relationships that truly matter so you can keep leveling up in the game of life. Level complete. You have just leveled up. Continue to the next lesson.